Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Seema Menon, and I'm the director and CEO of CFO Collective, the organization that owns the CFO India brand, which is a leading media platform focused at engaging the CFO community in India. I'm delighted to welcome you all to the interaction today. As you're aware, this is a closed group interaction, and we do not have an external audience listening into us. So that the larger finance community benefits out of this interaction, we plan to record this session and edit it before we disseminate it to the community. So with that, let's get started. A challenging business environment and an ever-changing tax landscape is putting enormous pressure on businesses to stay compliant and with the complex requirements and change. Tax compliance is becoming more and more data-driven and real-time. Further, the cost of non-compliance extends beyond interest and penalties into working capital impacting the profitability in the long run. As a result, technology is becoming even more critical to the tax function and teams have many asks. Just to sort of highlight some of this, given the pandemic and the ensuing challenges, I think the teams are asked to do more with less. Centralize the activities because then it makes it a little bit more cohesive to work require more and better data and drive value from the tax data. I think these are some of the asks of the team. So in this exclusive roundtable with tax experts, Clear and our CFOs, we discuss a practical approach to leveraging technology to ensure tax compliance. I'm absolutely delighted to welcome our esteemed participants for today's interaction. We have with us Hemant Kumar Ruya, Finance Director, SCO Region for DP World. We have Ajay Chaudhary, CFO, Minda Stonebridge. Shrikant Bhakkar, Joint CFO for Penner Industries. Balla Mundra, CFO, Hexagon Capability Center, India. Saumya Suman, Tax Head, Arvind Fashions. Varun Dhawan, Head of Tax in India for Deutsche Post. And Gauri Shankar Nagarajan, EVP Business, Enterprise Business for Clear. So thank you all for joining us uh, today. Gauri, I wanted to get started with you. You know, what are some of the key trends that you are seeing impacting the tax function today? And, you know, by your virtue of engaging with clients and partners, what do you think are some of the key developments that you see? I think first and, first and foremost, uh, Seema, uh, with, the, with the pandemic coming in, most of the work is going remote, mm-hmm. right? And, and because of this uh, remoteness, there is, we are seeing a big big push on digitization of business processes and taxes also fall under that bucket. So we've seen that need for remote uh, remote compliance teams managing tax. And what this leads to is also, hey, India always on compliance platform, which you can log into, look at the data, uh, use it and manage it uh, for your compliances. So so cloud-based tax is something that we're seeing picking up in terms of, uh, in terms of adoption. Second thing, I think uh, this is largely driven by the government in the, in the last uh, few years, right? A bigger thrust towards digitization, right? And on the back of digitization, leading to a lot more transparency and a lot more scrutiny uh, around, around tax and compliance. So while it simplifies, it makes it a lot more transparent and it also makes it open for uh, scrutiny. So the government government scrutiny and, and uh, greater need for reporting is something that, uh, that we are seeing. And, and the third a big trend that I'm seeing is that uh, tax and compliance as a business enabler is something that is starting to happen a lot more, right? Uh, because compliance teams can play a role in helping organizations optimize their working capital, right? Uh, uh, particularly around uh, the, the whole input tax credit optimization. We're seeing a lot more of that, a uh, uh, lot more of that happen. Last one I see is also in the increasingly connected world, right? Just simplifying the data flow related to compliance between the organization systems and the compliance engine is something that is uh, happening a lot more, right? So those are those are some of the few trends that I, uh, I I see happening in the tax world by virtue of interactions with many many people in the finance organization. Right. Great. I I also wanted to get a finance perspective on this. So. Anybody, uh, you know, would like to add to this saying that what is Gauri talked about some complexity in terms of taxation and compliance. So as CFOs and practitioners, would you want to give me a perspective on what's happening within your organizations or what is it that you're witnessing? 
In addition to whatever Gauri Shankar mentioned, one of the things that is also happening is continued and rapid legislative changes. So one side is the transparency, digitization, more deeper look into what we are doing, but alongside is also the rapid legislative changes. And sometimes it's becoming impossible to keep keep pace with the change itself. Because by the time you try and understand something new comes in and thereby you always feel that you are lagging behind in terms of what is changing. So that is something which is happening and similarly that is on the external environment part and the audit queries or the queries which is coming from the statutory authorities now is far more specific and precise. So one reason is of course is that they have so much of data coming through various sources that they are able to link one data information with another data information and derive much more meaningful information and insight out of it which enables them to ask very pointed question and which you cannot kind of say a very generic response you have to be very precise in terms of what you're responding to them this is on the external environment now if i look at from an internal organization point of view definitely there is a lot of activities happening and whereby tax and compliance which was pre- previously meant to be only a back-end compli- uh, regulatory front-ending function is now much more participative in the business discussions and decision making because anything that you do has some impact of some form of regulatory implication and thereby it's very pertinent that you are no more a compliance team but you are more of a trusted business advisor who is playing an equally participative role in the overall decision making of the organization. So oh, great. You know, we've had Gauri and Balav really talk about the complexities and what they're seeing in the environment. Hemant, if I had to ask you one specific question, you remember our conversation a couple of months ago, we were talking about where the CFO's role is moving, the kind of skill sets that the new team requires. So there was a very interesting McKinsey survey, you know, which talked around the size and the content of the tax function and uh, some of the respondents are almost about 40% of the respondents really said that in the in the next three to five years the team will comprise data analysts and technology experts with a tax background so do you do you think we're headed in that direction if you ask me yeah. I would say it's an understatement I would say in the next three to five years you'll have 50% of your tax team who need to necessarily be IT savvy and may or may not have a tax background. So if, mm-hmm. if, if you see most of the JDs if we have seen in our lives, it says uh, having XX is an added advantage. So an IT guy who has a tax background is an added advantage for the job. Right. That's right. how I would see it. Because you see what is happening is if you go back five years in time, just before GST when we had VAT, what did a tax guy do? Either he was collating uh, internal data from uh, your various uh, BUs or various segments in the company. He was ensuring that it has been paid in time. Okay, half the time he was ensuring in uh, returns are filed. And the balance time, he was outside office trying to get into some sort of... Whenever you called him, no, no, I am in this commissioner's office, I am in that commissioner's office, I am trying to solve this problem, I am trying to solve that problem. So if you asked him, can you come to a meeting, he would invariably be not available. He would rattle off sections and uh, case laws uh, as if that was, whenever he had a chance to come into a meeting, he would rattle off sections and case laws where we would just uh, wouldn't know Adam from Eve. Come today, your data is, and I'm talking even three years down the line, your data is going to come from the ERP. Right. Okay. Your uh, filing data will come from the ERP. So you just need to download it. There are various mechanisms uh, which are available today where you just kind of put it, upload it or download it depending on whichever software you are using and you're ready to file. Collation of data, sanitization of data is being done by technology. Right. Okay, now if you go into accounting, because the data has to be first accounted for, the tax guys earlier were oblivious of which codes they were going into. They would say, boss, you give it to me in Excel, I am going to file it. Today, if they have to understand what went wrong, why the data not tallying, they have to pick it up themselves. Because as a concept, self-service from the systems has become very important. Right. Okay, so he needs to understand that where the technology is taking him. Right, right. Now, if your data is all tying up, 
your litigation is so much going to be less on mundane issues right okay but as both pallav and gauri earlier pointed out litigation is going to increase if you have either massage the data rightly or wrongly i'm not sitting in judgment but or you have uh, had people who are non compliant and you have not caught on right, right now that needs analytical skills which will which data will throw up so for instance if you see the recent enactment where it says you are the sse has to ensure that the vendor has filed 3b okay now seriously that's if i if i just step back that's not my job I and mean, that's clearly not my job whether he has filed it or not if he has it's it's coming there if i can take my input tax credit i should be done and dusted the skills of a tax guy is becoming so much less so when will the skills of the tax guy come from all his sections and case laws is when after assessment you get a notice so when it starts getting in litigative okay he is no longer required to use his skills for assembling data so to that section of the tax team is now only going to focus on assessments litigation and uh, up to the filing and the return stage there will be guys who may or may not have a tax background are it savvy they download the data file story over right right no that's that's interesting you say that uh, himant because uh, you know in one of our conversations with with the cfo He said that you know when I'm ensuring that I put together a, a team for the new finance environment, I'm actively looking for data scientists, and uh, somebody with a finance background is great. But I think that's something that that can be managed. But if I don't have people who have the ability to crunch data, sanitize the data, and make it available for me to draw the necessary insights, I think I don't have essentially have a productive. team in place i think uh, you know that was a very profound statement coming from a cfo who would traditionally look for people with with many years of finance background so i think even the mindset is changing and like you rightly said i think technology is going to take care of most of the mundane tasks that finance teams would have to do otherwise and i think where it when it comes to strategic thinking drawing relevant insights i think that's where the the functionary or somebody with that functional expertise will come on board i think that's a that's a great input sorry i want to put to you next you know we talked a little bit about how governments and tax authorities are being savvy in terms of leveraging technology so tell us a little bit around what are the new developments happening there and and how are they leveraging technology to be able to levy taxes yeah i, I would say the 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 most uh, important thing that's happening today is uh, compliance and supply chains emerging right right and i think uh, 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 himant also brought this point up earlier it was enough if uh, just you were compliant now the onus of compliance is not just on you but all your ecosystem right which is right. your vendors your distributors your suppliers So this is a very very uh, important trend that has ramifications on how you manage your compliance, and uh, that's that's one thing that I'm uh, seeing uh, a lot, right? Uh, and and uh, the, the second one, uh, I mean, came up on all the points so far. The government adopting more and more technology, right? I mean, looks like you're you're connecting your uh, e-voice information uh, uh, to a lot of stuff. You could connect your fast tag to the e-vehicle movement, right? A bunch of these data points getting connected and giving visibility to the government uh, is happening a lot. And on on the hidden visibility, you'll see that there's a lot more scrutiny. So that's the second thing: right? the adoption of technology leading to scrutiny. And, and the third one, obviously, coming out of this, there's a lot more stringency. Uh, now, because you have data, you can clearly point out saying where exactly is a leakage happening and how do you go and flag it. These, to me, are the three important trends. Right? And the most important one among this is the compliance and supply chain coming together, which has very, very strong implications for everyone and the business side and and their ecosystem. Right, right. Yeah, I mean that's a great point, Gauri, talking about how the tax liability is not restricted to you as an individual but it's across the ecosystem so you just 
not just need to ensure that you're compliant, but you also need to ensure that the uh, ecosystem that you engage with is also compliant, uh, you know, in terms of filing taxes, etc. So uh, that's great. I want to now go to Varun and Soumya because you both look after tax as a function within the organization. So, you know, we've heard about the pandemic being great accelerator to adoption of technology. Most organizations are looking at digitally transforming different functions. So tell us within your organization, what have been some of the drivers for embracing digital transformation, particularly in tax? So in terms of uh, tax compliances, of course, I think a lot of people within, within this panel have resonated the fact that technology is the buzzword for tax compliances. Uh, so during the pandemic, pre-pandemic or post-pandemic also, I think technology is going to continue to be the buzzword for tax compliances and uh, it is essentially because not just my liability but even my working capital gets impacted even if one of the members or the stakeholders within the ecosystem is non-compliant and uh, because of that it becomes very very to ensure that my tax data talks very well with my ERP data and of course I have to consider ERP as the source of information for my tax uh, compliances but in many organizations and I think others may agree that the source is multiple it's not just one source because there are multiple ERPs used based on the business requirement so the moment there are multiple ERPs, the gaps will start arising because it will involve manual intervention to combine everything. And then a new technology needs to be built in to ensure that all the three or four or five or as many number of ERPs that are being used are combined together to prepare my final example, a sales register or a purchase register, which essentially becomes uh, my base data for filing uh, my returns. Right. So because of uh, all these complexities and the business environment that is there in my organization the effort that we are making now is to ensure that my source of information becomes a single point of contact and the base data that is getting created is also fully sanitized and up to the mark for my tax compliance because in my experience i've seen that if my sales register goes wrong then it doesn't just impact my liability, but right. it also impacts my customers who have to take credit mm. of the GST that has uh, that is being charged. And in today's world, like uh, others were also just saying, tax officers are considering technology as the backbone of their assessments. So um, I'm sure uh, others may have also read uh, way back in 2019, a GST audit manual was issued by the CBIC. And the kind of approach that the tax authorities are going to have at the time of conducting GST audit is amazing. I mean, data anal analytics that we generally talk about from a you know a big uh, management company perspective, those approach are actually inbuilt in that audit manual. Mm. And till now, because of the pandemic, the audits were postponed. But now, if you see the trend, the GST authorities are just issuing notice left, right, centre right. across the jurisdiction. And if they actually implement those data analytic skills to, uh, you know, analyze the data of the assessees and then start asking questions, I think we are all going to be in for one bigger audit, apart from our internal and statutory audits that we generally have. So. Keeping all of this in mind, the efforts that we are taking right now is ensuring that whatever has happened in the past, identifying those gaps, of course, again, by using technology, because uh, in today's time and the volumes that we deal with, manual reconciliation cannot happen. So we are devising ways and means to ensure that the, compliance, uh, the reconciliations are done in a foolproof manner. And whatever gaps are there, we are trying to bridge that gap. And with the learnings of the past, we are also setting up the path for the future to ensure that those gaps are met. Because in my opinion, technology cannot help unless and until our base is strong and very clear and focused. Right, right. 
so these are uh, some of the points that uh, we are uh, taking care of in our uh, organization from a tax and technology perspective Aaron, you want to add to that yeah so i think uh, this pandemic gave a lot of lessons to all of us and so is it for me in my tax function so just for to give you the perspective i have got over 150 gst registrations and it was a herculean task to get all of this done remotely i think what saved us was that we had invested heavily at the start of gst when gst was implemented to ensure that we are as less person dependent as possible and it's all data driven process driven and i think that saved us through the day we saw a few glitches in the initial months of the lockdown we had delays in a few of the compliances but i think over a period of now almost two years it's become a way of life where we are so comfortable working remotely and the other that's on the gst side and on the the litigation side i think what saved me for the you know for in the day was that we implemented a litigation tool which helps us to manage all litigation so if i have 150 gst registrations and uh, about 20 income tax uh, pan numbers so it's a hum- humongous task for me and my team to manage that on a excel sheet basis of which notice came when and when do you need to reply to that notice and i think we invested in a digital uh, litigation tool somewhere in november of last year and it really helped us where we ensure that every information goes on that tool there are auto emails that get triggered to my team and to the finance guys what information is required and uh, by when so i think that's a clear advantage where we saw that technology really helped us to tide over this whole issue and now it's become it's become a challenge to even ask people to come to office like i come to office to set an example that guys please come to office you know we right. just can be at home all the time right and um, that's what uh, technology has been such a great level of all of us where distances don't matter physical presence doesn't matter it was a time where you didn't even think about being remotely and you know i was so used to reading hard copies of books and case laws etc but right. today it's so much you know easy that just go on the on a soft copy and do a search and read whatever so it's really helped us right great ashley can't you want to add to that you know what are some of the biggest effects that digitization is having on tax uh, in particularly in your organization yeah in terms of digitization if i have to uh, say a couple of things what have the other speakers have added mostly we've started moving online now what we have done uh, is just a simple check kind of a thing now we are facilitating whether the vendors have uploaded their returns or not through a digital platform mm. so we have taking a help getting the data for each of our vendors before we are processing the payment whether okay. he has uploaded his returns or not which was earlier never seen never visualized and never part of a tax uh, compliance at all and now the lower part of the work where earlier even for a tax practitioners when you have to have you, you had a minimum qualification now even for a lower level guys we are picking up for just to do the basic comparison of the gstr 1 and 3b though we are trying to do manual at lot of time there are glitches that are happening in terms of the gst number or the invoice numbers not being correct and thereby uh, we are not getting we are having the higher input and uh, there are a lot of amounts which is lying in the gst 3b which do not correlate we are taking the help of the very junior guys uh, to correlate the data and see that the data reconciles uh, part of it right we are having done all the things uh, in the erp platform we are generating a list wherein those are the people who have not uploaded and then pushing it back to the businesses and telling them you please get this data validated and other things which was which was never there 3 years ago as part of the uh, tax compliance and the work that we do right 
Great. Ajay, um, you know, we've actually heard all of our uh, speakers today talk about the importance of technology, uh, digitization to be able to manage the tax function better, right? So if that is the truth, what must be some of the steps that, that we should take to ensure a smooth implementation of digitization within the function? Thanks, Ima. And before uh, going to that question, maybe I'll uh, just recollect what our other fellow speakers said. And uh, one thing that is coming out of uh, all these discussion is one part is reconciliation because of the volume that uh, Soumya mentioned and that is becoming day by day one of the important aspect of uh, digitization. Earlier, all these reconciliations used to happen uh, on a manual platform. So that is one part. And the second one is our stakeholders. So our stakeholders internal as well as external. So the answer that I'm going to give is uh, the first and foremost requirement that is coming while implementation kind of thing is uh, the ultimate use of this digital uh, aspect. And that is when you are going to pay to government and you are going to do some reconciliation so that the customers, they, they don't face any issue uh, like and the GSTR to a reconciliation. And that of course is from supplier side and 3V is from customer side. So that part I always would keep in mind, uh, always begin the end in mind while uh, starting. So reconciliation and the ultimate uh, tax compliances. Second uh, part that I would keep it in mind in uh, the internal stakeholders. The training part is most important because when we started uh, the implementation of GST. The foremost uh, requirement that came up is training, where uh, the supply chain partners, the, uh, the engineer and the other uh, operation guys, they lagged in this. So training is obviously the second most important thing while implementing or to go for digitization, I would go for first train all the stakeholders. And the third point is the integration part, because right now when we use SAP as an ERP, there are lots of softwares available in market, but unless until we integrate all those softwares in a well synchronized manner, uh, that is not going to go uh, give us any kind of benefit. So integration is the third important part that I would focus on. And last but not the least, the discipline uh -huh, that that would go once the implementation phase is over. Great. So discipline of uh, the entire process is also important. No, great, well said. Uh, Gauri, that comes, uh, you know, I want to come to you for the next one because we've talked increasingly about data being sacrosanct and, uh, you know, having the most high quality data to be able to draw the right kind of insights and analysis. You know, in your engagement with clients, what are some of the potential hurdles that you see or pitfalls that you see when it comes to automating for uh, analysis of data? And that's, a, that's a good one, uh, Seema. I think uh, first and foremost, right, most businesses uh, find the scale of data processing for, for mm. uh, reconciliation or this becoming a big hurdle. And along with scale comes to some parts, right? Why, why is this scale relevant? Obviously, one is saying, you know, if I have to reconcile data at this scale, it's probably going to cost me a lot more. Right? There's a misconception about, hey, uh, this, this is costing a lot in terms of doing a reconciliation. But on the other hand, if you look at the cost of non-compliance, it's going to be even bigger, right? So, so that's, that's the first bit. The second one, I think, is the point that Ajay also mentioned about integration, right? The misconception about integration around twofold, right? The first one is hey, typically integration implementations take a lot of time, right? People feel like uh, this is going to take uh, take several months. In most cases, it gets stuck in processing and stuff. So that's something tightly managed. You can still still ensure that integration is done and uh, data seamlessly flows between your system and whatever compliance engine you use, and that facilitates the ability to do these reconciliations much faster and uh, under control. And, and the second one uh, around integration is around data security. 
right? Mm-hmm. And I think here, here the choice of uh, the choice of the platform becomes important. If you are choosing a platform that is uh, SOC two compliant, ISO compliant, right? Then the concerns around around integration data security is lost. And and the third pitfall, uh, I think this probably came out in multiple panelists' uh, opinion is uh, availability of capability. Right? Do we have uh, do we have team members who can uh, who have the orientation towards handling a uh, huge scale of data? Do they understand the tools? Uh, are they technically savvy to marry reconcile data between two different systems? Right? Here again, I think there are ways to mitigate this. Uh, I mean, having the right partner, having the right kind of training, uh, training for the uh, tax team members can really help manage these things. Yes, there are hurdles in terms of uh, handling data, but I'm sure all of them have have ways and means of uh, mitigating those. Great. So, and I'd like any of you to sort of respond to this. You know, we've talked about digitization of the tax function. and all of you sort of said that that's important because you know then it allows you for better quality of data relevant insights and you also ensure that you are far better managing your compliances right so tell me something whether digitization of the the tax department should it be part of the organization's overall digitization strategy or you need to look at it separately So anyone who wants to respond uh, this i think correlates with what we did 5 uh, 6 years back and exactly the same question came should it be part of individual finance role or should it be part of overall company's digitization and sima you won't believe the group chief operating officer uh, and uh, group financial officer both of them told that time that this should be well part of the overall digitization step because of the two reason number one we can go to sleep in a very nice relaxed manner when we know all these digitization they happen in a well integrated manner and that is where the risk of committing mistakes they come down and the second part is the external risk that we carry while doing some compliances that also come down in kind of good well synchronized digitization so these were the two points that kept in mind at that time and uh, this was part of our overall uh, digitization, uh, digitization uh, portfolio strategy. of the company right right so amir you had a point yeah i was uh, in fact i'm going to uh, echo what uh, ajay just said so even in my organization uh, i think uh, historically tax function was uh, not uh, taken so seriously Mm-hmm. and uh, as the uh, gst came in and the way uh, integration is happening within the tax authorities that is the integration within the gst framework and also between say an income tax uh, portal and the gst portal and uh, then the customs portal the dgft portal so there are like so many regulatory authorities slash tax authorities which are already talking to each other Right. and because of that it becomes very very imperative for the digitization of the tax function to be a part of the overall vision on digital tra- transformation of the company right it is also very important because tax in today's time is uh, not just a compliance function it is actually a business enabler mm-hmm. just to give you a perspective if today my gst registration approval don't come through for my new store I can't raise my first invoice also. Absolutely. So it has become that imperative. So therefore, right. clearly, tax function digitization has to be a part of the overall vision of the digital ta- transformation of the company. It right. is not just business enabler; it can have severe financial impact. It could be adverse and positive both, and that will completely dependent. on how smoothly we have transformed into the digital world and how strong we are in terms of our base data that is uh, coming from my source so i, uh, I just great. wanted to add uh, yeah yeah shrikant i think the point that everybody is trying to say and why we are moving to digitalization and other things most of the times it used to happen in the past that the government was one step back and we were one step ahead now with the digitalization of the gst coming in government is one step ahead of us 
they have the income tax data they have the source data of the dgft customs or whatever you the various departments that it has they have all the data which is available at the fingertips this is this is all made it possible for them to have the data simple things like in the gst regime they they are able to track even the gst registrations that have been done the people have not filed the returns and people who have filed the returns paying everything but they are not paying cash gst yesterday we have received notice for one of our state wherein they said you are filing the returns perfectly fine your returns are fine your data is matching everything is fine but ultimately you are not ending up paying cash gst it was like an io opener that uh, the government has technologically has gone way ahead of the business and now that the business is trying to cope up with what the differences that are coming so that was the limited point that i wanted to make that no no excellent in excellent this, in this case the government is way ahead of the business in, in, in not in everything but at least uh, they have they have tried their best to be ahead of the business great balav you had a point yeah yeah so i was listening to everybody so i thought that from my perspective i can just summarize that if you look at four v's one is the variety of data second is the volume of data third is the velocity and fourth is the volume the value rather yeah. so if you look at all these everything fits into this because right. one things are so varied that keeping pace is difficult then volume is so large for some people then of course the velocity because the changes are happening so much and of course the value bit so if at a larger level we are not integrating our initiative of digitization with the larger company initiative then definitely there will be loose ends mm. that will continue and that will come and haunt subsequently and that is what typically was happening when we were in the pre digital digital or pre transformative stage where things were still being maintained in excel somebody was maintaining something somebody was maintaining something and there were always data inconsistencies and reconciliation was the order of the day right. so if it is not fitting into the larger picture then while theory we will be digital we have transformed but in practice some of the erstwhile practices will still continue to okay. continue challenges right right and one thing uh, it came in my mind uh, see the board of directors they have also become very smart mm. and earlier we used to give a certificate that all compliances they are well met within timeline mm. and so and so but right now in a board meeting they ask can you show us some kind of uh, you know online digitized format where you are doing all this fortunately we had these kind of softwares and and that is where they also were very pleased they right. said that this is how we control the risk of uh, non compliances and we kind of get some kind of uh, you know uh, confidence that uh, we are in the safe hands so cfo's role has also become very 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 critical nowadays Right. Yeah, Varun. Yeah, Varun. Was also that you know the tax uh, strategy has to be linked to the company one because if you hear so much, you know today you hear about the ESG part of it, the G yeah. part, the governance part. You cannot achieve without tax playing its role over there, right. ensuring right. that financial compliances are there. And right. The finance and the tax need to be very well integrated, and therefore, therefore in the organizational uh, strategy also just to you know ex- tell you that as a company dhl we have our group strategy as you know to deliver excellence in a digitalized world and all of that right it is you we take it down to every level so it comes down to me it goes down to my team so our mm. uh, ikos we are uh, you know we are assessed on that so my kras need to have something on digitalization which is well integrated into, into the company strategy and i need to demonstrate that at my appraisal so that's the kind of way we have you know taken it down to the last level of the digitalization strategy right uh, himant i want you to sort of make a point around you know similar to what varun had said you know how does this all roll into the the demands around esg that uh, that cfos are you know talking about quite aggressively today so uh, how does all of this roll into into being 
you know a sustainable organization esg by its very nature is uh, starts with environment but i think if i just enlarge the word environment into a little more broader meaning it means all sorts of environment not just the natural environment that usually people right. talk of right so if we enlarge the word into a let's say compliance environment into an ethical environment what happens is when you're talking of sustainability right. sustainability can only come when the repetitive things you're doing is taken for granted right and that can only happen when you know you are working on a one or a zero right, right. basically means unfortunately it boils down to technology right Right. and it's only the value adds that one should be looking at where you bring in that bit of extra knowledge to the table when you sit at the table so for sustainability to happen i think a mindset change needs to happen first right a am i going that route right. now i'm not getting into a debate whether what happens if you don't go that route Right, right. Okay, because that's for another day and time. But the question is, am I going that route? A. B. If I am wanting to go that route, is my organization ready here? Not through money, not through anything else. Are we ready as as a team? Uh, is are we geared as a, as a team with a open mindset? Right. If we go that route, obviously technology becomes a big enabler. and you know as uh, somaya was mentioning where multiple erps are there you know we need to work around all that to get apis working and uh, things working to get rid of the mundane stuff and that's when you bring in value add so you know no one questions you on sustainability you know it's ultimately what does a cfo want something which is working predictively every time you so if you have to give a guidance you are very sure of the guidance that you can give to the street right. so it has to be predictable and when your mundane stuff is taken care of you become predictable right please the core then you look at the spikes are you only managing the spikes and that in my opinion brings in sustainability because you are doing things ethically you are doing things uh, compliant and obviously when you have these two mindsets nature comes uh, with it the investor ecosystem the investor environment becomes a part of your mindset so everything falls in place and right. when everything falls in place and people see that happening the value of the enterprise become so much more uh, i mean it jumps by an x factor and uh, obviously people value you your customers will value you your vendors will value it all can kind of becomes a, a juggernaut which starts rolling at a rapid pace right right no that's that's a great uh, response sorry i want to come to you next you know we've heard around digitalization we've heard around how cfos are prioritizing digital transformation within their organization more so for this context around the tax departments so tell us what is the future uh, that you see for these tax departments and what are some of the positive developments that you are very uh, excited about a very interesting question i see the uh, the future of tax departments uh, as as a evolution right uh, and uh, in my mind this evolution has three phases right Uh, i would say the first phase of evolution is, is something like stand alone compliance i would say probably most organizations will probably be in this stage of evolution right where you have your operational data and you either use a compliance engine or the government portal to download the data process it upload it to the government portal and do the filing right it's still stand alone these are two separate things and and this there's a human who is making the connection between these two the the second phase of evolution i think a lot of panelists talk about it i think their their organizations are probably in this stage of uh, evolution is integrated compliance right where your operational systems and the compliance systems are integrated and data seamlessly flows from 
one to the other and you are able to do reconciliations at scale you are able to do optimizations at scale right, right. and that's the that's, that's the second stage of evolution where it causes an integrated uh, compliance right? uh, and the most advanced stage of evo- uh, evolution is what i call real time proactive compliance and here beyond just the connection of systems right compliance actually becomes a true business enabler in a real time way right it's, it's proactive no longer reactive right you're not doing compliance in a post facto manner you're doing it pre facto right at the time of uh, new vendor registration at the time of making the payment you're checking whether this is compliant or not compliant and taking decisions based on this right and not only this you you're also using the compliance information to provide additional impact to the to the business right it could be it could be working capital optimization it could be saying you know i'm making bill discounting available because e invoice as a compliance tool is now there right that's the most uh, advanced stage of uh, evolution i i see lot of lot of cfos uh, tax leaders working towards getting to this stage of uh, evolution and uh, I, i think this is where the future is i have to just add tima yeah. uh, Yeah, I sure. think maybe in the future tax department you would see the artificial intelligence itself throwing out notices to you and uh, those notices will automatically come to the SECs and the right. SECs have to reply to those that right. kind of thing can also be possible with the uh, with the government yeah. pay that they are giving so there will be no tax department or no tax official who will officially give you the notice it right. it will it'll automatically generate the notice and the notice will sent out to you Oh Srikant uh, uh, just to update you we have got one oh, from it? the AI from the AI for FY 17 18 the very first year of GST implementation so it has already begun right right so i think we've had a very fruitful discussion talking about how digitization of the tax function is is rapid and uh, you know how it has very positive developments for the organization but you know just as closing comments I know that most organizations are on the journey to digitization they're starting small experimenting with things uh, and then moving ahead so what would be your advice to companies who are sort of embarking on that journey quite aggressively so given that you you all have come a certain way in terms of your digitization initiatives what would be your uh, uh, inputs to organizations that are just starting out or or are somewhere at an early stage of adoption of different technologies i would say that uh, you know many times the finance the it and depending on tax whether it's part of finance or a separate function the finance guy says okay let's do it manually the it guy will bring in something which is very fancy right my suggestion would be look at uh, a your uh, core data is it ready to take uh, benefit of the additional uh, technology that you will bring in second take the mundane stuff uh, and see if you i mean don't go for something very fancy because for the bells and whistles you will pay a bomb but i don't know how much of value you will get so take care of your data whether it's ready or not do something which is workable uh, i mean you can skip the bells and whistles and third i think mindset because you may buy something the either people are not ready for it or not trained uh you will uh, anyways have a problem okay. so i would say those are the three principles that uh, people should in my opinion uh, look at before uh, jumping on to the uh, taking help of technology to overcome their uh, tax issues i think uh, the other part will come together we all are intelligent but the critical areas that i see is the external compliances where we are getting affected uh, in some of the cases we are becoming principal contractor okay even though the causes done by others we are getting impacted we are have uh, we need to sell out money penalties interest so there i think one of the area where ai is or digitization can also think of something so that we become confident while giving some order to uh, the service providers or contractors or the third party so i think this is one of the area where we need to concentrate pella you had a point while we all of us spoke about transformation in the form of digitization 
but one thing which we an organization depending upon the size and scale can also look at is about insourcing versus outsourcing mm. because do you really want to keep everything in source where the level deep level of expertise which is expected now you may not be able to either afford or manage so right. do you really want to run with that kind of an organization or maybe you can outsource some bit of it and keep supervisory activities or decision making activities in the organization so that that was one comment which i wanted to make and second was around the aspect of 8020 principle that maybe try small but try in those big impact areas so that mm. you can actually showcase what is being achieved and thereby the natural buy in and the support of the management and the larger of ecosystem of stakeholders is available and then you can scale it up as you need to now that's a good point balav you know start small see those early wins you know for you to be able to engage the larger set of stakeholders anybody else varun somya yeah as a closing statement i'd like to just say that uh, a technology of course uh, is going to play and in fact is already playing a very very critical role but all technology will fail if like i've been saying since the start of this discussion if my base is not correct if my source is not correct if my data is not proper then no integration will really help me achieve right. accuracy in my compliance and perfection there and why how and why should my base data go wrong there also technology is involved there could be glitches in my erp there could be certain long wrong incorrect logics that could have been built in which is actually right. throwing up a wrong report so before we transform into a technology based compliance or integrate into a you know tax filing uh, software it's very very critical in my opinion that we look at our source system and ensure that the data that is being thrown or the reports that are being generated by that system is full proof in terms of uh, mathematical accuracy and also from a legal aspect from a technical perspective example is hsn and the gst rates mapped around it so if my item master is only not correct obviously my tax computation in my base data will be wrong Right. so there's no point of integrating with that kind of a data because eventually then my tax returns will also be faulty so right. that's the right. message that i would like to give that any transformation or tax technology transformation will be successful only when i have ensured that my source is full great great input uh, yes varun what i would give to the companies who want to adopt technology is that first is the tax function needs to step out and step up to and you know face the business it's no longer a siloed function sitting in one corner of the office with their books etc they need to come forward get involved integrated with business because today there are so many nuances of the business which tax needs to know and similarly even the finance function and the cfos and the ceos I would think they need to ensure that tax plays that kind of a role and give them the platform to come forward and give those suggestions and understand the business issues. And uh, yeah, as the other said, showcase your slow, uh, your quick wins. It's a slow process that will happen. It's not that overnight we are going to become tax savvy tax departments. It's a slow right. process. You need to work on it, and it will happen. and in the end it's not any rocket science it's in the end your data it's just the way you see your data in another way right yeah shrikant you had a point no i'm fine okay good gauri any closing uh, remarks no fantastic fantastic conversation all uh, very very valid points right uh, around around data around readiness of the department for the transformation the role of technology fantastic great great thank you all so much we've had a very interesting very insightful discussion and i'm sure the larger finance community will benefit out of this interaction thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to be a part of this uh, interaction and i look forward to engaging with you all soon at another session thank you